Hello Internet! Today we are going to be taking a look at dependency injection in ASP.NET. Um, we're just going to be doing this all from scratch. Um, if you're unfamiliar, dependency injection is a version of uh, inversion of control, which is uh, sort of a way of instead of an object saying, this is something that I need in order to work, it can just say, I need something of this type. Think of your car. Instead of your car saying it requires a very specific type and brand of wheel, Instead, it can just say, I need wheels. And then that gives you the opportunity to swap those out depending on what makes sense for your use case. Um, so for example, swapping in snow tires during the winter. Uh, that's not possible if the car itself is saying it needs specific things rather than asking the environment what it should use or, or asking you what it should use. Um, so that's what inversion of control is. And that's why it's kind of useful in these situations. Um, it swaps who controls the configuration of an object. Um, so we're just going to get started here by doing a .NET new uh, web API. I think this is right. <laughs> um, uh, we are doing this live, so who knows what's going to happen. Um, but we're going to create a new uh, ASP.NET project and open that up in Visual Studio Code. Um, so code-n with the path is going to open up that directory in Visual Studio Code. So there we go. Um, and so the default thing we're going to get is some sort of weather forecasting app uh, that's going to run and give us a weather forecast uh, that contains all of this. So here's the controller for that, giving us a bunch of extra information that we don't necessarily need. <laughs> um, so let me just quickly try to... Okay, can't make that smaller. Perfect. That's fine. <laughs> um, so this is our controller. This is the brains that does all the actual logic that responds to your requests. And it actually already has some dependency injection going on inside of it. Um, this logger is being injected. This lets you swap in new loggers depending on what you're actually trying to do. So in this case, we can actually inject a version of a logger that our application is using without, without having the controllers explicitly define what loggers they require. Um, sure. <laughs> so what we're going to basically do is add something else, something custom that we can use. Um, so what I'm going to do is just because this is an example is we're just going to add this at the top level, I think. And we're just going to call this our calculator.cs. Um, so we're going to create a really quick class here, public class calculator that can do some calculations. And so I'm going to start by implementing the calculator. And then we're actually going to step back and implement an interface for this that is actually going to provide some of the functions that we need. And then that interface can be the thing that we inject so that other implementations of that can be used by other applications. Um, so maybe you want to, in this case, what this calculator is going to do is have a value and then some operation you can perform on that value. Um, so adding, multiplying, dividing, etc. cetera. Um, but what that operation is can be changed by the calculator that you swap in. So let's give it a public int um, value, I guess. <laughs> um, and then we are, let's do this in properties just so we have a little bit more control there. There we go. And then we're going to do for this, we're going to just mostly focus on addition because we're, I'm just going to write one of these because it's a sample, um, but uh, void. Um, and we are going to do a uh, operation with an int. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and that's going to take in a number, I guess. Uh, and then we're just going to do um, value plus equals our number. Cool. Um, so uh, not sure exactly if that makes sense. We can expand on this in a bit. But there's our really basic calculator. And so instead of just using this and injecting this directly, we're going to say this implements an I calculator, which is going to be any interface. Uh, so an interface I calculator is anything that does a void operation with an int. There we go. Uh, this should have a name. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> so in this case, we now have this I calculator. We're using an interface here. 
And so this is the idea of composition. Um, we're, we're making something where we can basically implement a calculator however we want, and all of our code is going to be coded against the interface. And then the concrete implementation is going to exist in one place. And what that gives us is the ability to swap out that concrete implementation of the calculator without breaking all the code that uses it. So everything else will still work if we take this class and make it do something else, as long as it continues to implement the interface that we used. And this can be really useful in your code because it makes your code a little bit less likely to just break apart all over the place. Um, so that's what we're doing here. And so now we need something that's going to actually accept this calculator. Um, so I'm just going to remove basically all of the weather stuff. Um, so we have this weather um, controller. We can call this calculator controller. Let's rename this. All right, that's going to break a bunch of things, but that's OK. Um, oh, it broke a whole bunch of things. Uh, um, there we go. Uh, so we swap all of that out. Uh, we're not going to return a weather forecast anymore. We're just going to return a int, I think. I think that's fine. <laughs> um, and then we're just going to return the value of whatever it comes into our calculator. So let's go and find that. Uh, private read-only i calculator. And so we can set this to read only, even though the value is going to be updating, the reference to the calculator isn't going to change once we create this class. Um, so that's why re making it read only works, even though we can do operations on it and change the actual internal values of it. The reference to this doesn't change. Um, so this should be our calculator. And then we need a thing. <laughs> um, clicking my scroll bar. Perfect. Um, so let's do that. We have our I calculator. And this is going to be our calculator. Um, so those are different. So let's do this dot calculator equals our calculator. Perfect. And so now we're injecting this I calculator into our thing. Um, I don't know why it doesn't like this. It's because our interface isn't public. Uh, so that should fix that and that should go away. Perfect. Um, and now we have this uh, whole method. We're just going to do our calculator dot operation um, like this. And I think we could even have a int value here. So operation int value equals one I think should work. Um, and then we'll do an operation with our value. And then our calculator is going to return its value from this function. Um, it calculation. Perfect. Uh, and I don't think this is public, so let's go and oh, um, another thing I didn't do. We didn't add this value as part of our interface, so it does exist on the concrete implementation, but we're not using that. We're not referencing that cal this calculator at all. This class right now isn't used, doesn't exist. Um, another cool thing with this um, that I didn't call out here, if you're writing a bunch of tests, this gives you a really easy way to inject mocks and fakes into your testing code. So you can swap out like databases really quickly by just pulling out this and replacing the interface with something that makes a little bit more sense inside of your test environment. Um, so let's do this int value. And this just needs a get, I think. Uh, we could even make this a private set um, because it's not going to be public anyway. So uh, for all intents and purposes, we won't be able to see that this can be set. So if I actually try to do that, calculator.value equals 100, um, that's going to break. Because against the interface, that isn't, that isn't legal. Um, so that gives us a little bit of other safety there. But basically, all we've done now is make something that adds a value to our thing and then runs it. And I think we're good. Um, I can delete this. Let's get rid of that. And then we have our program here. And all of this looks good. So I think we're done. Perfect. <laughs> Let's go and run this. Uh, so if we do this, 
and do a .NET run eventually. <laughs> um, thinking. There it is. Perfect. If we run this, everything should run just fine. We're actually probably going to run into a few issues, though, because even though this runs and I can go here, let's open up a Postman instance, create a new collection and add a request to calculate something. Calculate, sure. This is going to go here to, I think, to calculate. Sure. Um, so if I send this off, um, disable SSL. Perfect. All right, cool. We broke it. <laughs> um, so we did hit our endpoint. We did hit our controller. Um, but this is quite small. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to make that bigger. So I'm sorry for that. <laughs> um, but we're running into some exceptions and we're probably getting them here as well. Yeah. So we broke our controller um, because we're trying to get this thing. Um, an unhandled exception has occurred while executing the request. Invalid operation, unable to resolve the service for type I calculator. And because what's happening here is when we hit the, con the constructor for this class, this gets automatically created for us every time somebody invokes this service. Um, so when you first launch your application, this controller doesn't isn't created. It gets created the first request to that controller. And so it's going to try to create that and then figure out how to find services to inject into each of these dependencies. So it's going to find a logger that matches the criteria that you provided and try to fulfill that. Uh, and it can um, because we, we've got that defined by the framework. But we also said it needs an I calculator and we didn't give one of those. So it has no idea how to do that. Um, so we need to tell it how to get one of these. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next. Um, so let's go and do that. We, what we can do is add a service here. So you can see we're adding a bunch of services. We have our controllers that get added, our endpoints explorer and swagger get added. Um, that gives us a way to kind of quickly explore this API. Um, but what we can do here is do services.add. Um, and let's do a scoped, I think is what we want. Um, so we'll talk about these in just a second. Um, so we're going to add a scoped reference here to an I calculator that uses calculator. And so what this is doing is asking for some implementate or some reference that it's implementing and then what the implementing class is. And so we're saying calculator is what we're going to use to replace this I calculator. So use that in any place that asks for an I calculator, which means that I should be able to rerun this and get a result. Um, so now that this runs, I should be able to take this and run it and get one. And then if I run it again, we'll get one. Um, and I still can't make it bigger. Nope. All right. <laughs> um, there's there's some way to do it. Uh, I always forget, so I don't know. Um, the text is very small. But anyway, we're getting one back constantly. And the reason we constantly are getting one back as a result here is because of the way we're actually implementing this. We said this is a scoped service, which means for the scope of an invocation of our web request, we're going to create an instance of calculator. But every time a new instance gets created or gets requested, also create a new calculator, which means every time we make a web request to this service, we're going to create a new calculator. There's three types of scopes that you can have. There's transient, which means every time you would need a calculator, create a new one, which means if you're injecting multiple calculators throughout your service, uh, maybe you're re requesting multiple different things and they all need a calculator. Each serve, each one of those would get a new version of it. With scoped, we're saying use the same version across everything in this call. But once that call completes, once we've responded to the web request, remove that and create a new one the next time. Um, so every one of your clients that's requesting from the service is going to get a, a new version of the calculator. And then the third version 
is a singleton, um, which means for the entire duration of this application, um, use the one instance. So this can be useful for like database pools and things like that, where you have a connection and you don't need to recreate it every time somebody makes a request, because that might take a little bit of time. Um, this gives you a way to do that. And it means that if we now request this, we'll get one and then two and then three and then four and so on. Um, and we should be able to even go even further. So we can do like value and do 12. I guess that's what I typed. So now we're at 16, 28, 40, etc. Um, so very important to note, that's not a database. If I restart my service, it's all gone. That's not the point here. Um, you shouldn't use this as like a state store because if your service ever stops or goes away, you'll lose all of that. This is more useful if there's something that um, can be shared across every part of your service. Um, so that's what those three things are. And that's how it all works. Um, so I think this is probably a good-ish point to stop here. Um, again, the options are transient, um, scoped, oops, there we go, and singleton. And you can pick which ones make sense, and then they will automatically get injected to everything else. Um, another interesting thing um, is you can inject things into other things. So this calculator is now a service that is part of this, which means that other things that are getting injected can be injected into the calculator as well. And you do that in the exact same way. Um, so the same way that we would inject every other part of this, same way we have this constructor that is accepting new things, we can now add that to our calculator that we're creating and say, accept something else, maybe an operation that you want to perform, whether it's addition or multiplication, you could inject that rather than concretely implement it inside of your calculator. Um, but that's probably enough for, for now. Um, if you want to learn more or hear more about this, uh, let me know in the comments and we can dive a little bit deeper. But I think for just getting, getting into it and kind of figuring out what this is, uh, this is probably enough. Um, I will leave some links to some other more thorough docs down below. So if you're interested in that and want to kind of follow up there, um, you can also do that. But anyway, I think that's it for now. So some, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. So until then, see you internet.